Hi, my name is Luke. I practice in the field of integrative and lifestyle medicine. Integrative and lifestyle medicine puts you in the center. It gives a 360 degree approach. You as a whole, we help you put it together, we help you find a way, and that is the power of integrative and lifestyle medicine. I hope you're having a great day. Uh, today I want to talk about a very, very important subject. I may get a little bit scientific, but I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible because I believe that if you understand how the human body works when it comes to what we're talking about today, you will already have your action plan. You will already know what to do. You will also know what to do if you mess up with your diet and your lifestyle in the future. The point is there are a lot of people today struggling with body fat. Now, there could be many reasons why a woman or man puts on a lot of body fat. Okay, we're going to talk about the main reason today, but also do know that some men or women and women are on certain medications that can make them put on weight, like steroids, or certain medications that have a side effect of putting on weight or gaining weight. We're not talking about that. In some cases today, you will also find that there are people who have a really poor hormonal imbalance in their body. And so if they have more estrogen, okay, they will gain more weight. It's a hormonal imbalance and that can be solved. That problem can be sorted with lifestyle. Okay, but now let's get to the main reason why people put on fat in the first place, especially in the midriff, the, the belly area, the midriff area and other parts of the body. And when they start to work out, they lose fat from their face, from their arms, parts of their back, their legs sometimes. It's different for everyone because remember, everyone's unique and bio-individual. But the belly fat seems to hang on for a long time. Okay, to get to that, you'll have Google fat loss right now and you'll have hundreds and hundreds of different, different programs and diets and exercises and herbs and herbs and all of that stuff. No, let's get deeper into the science today. Understand this, a lot of problems in life get solved through understanding. Let's say you're in a relationship, you're constantly fighting, making up, fighting, making up. They're like putting band-aids on. But when you understand why that conflict happens, you know, you know, when you understand your partner, you understand your child or whatever, understanding leads you to a better resolution in all, in all, in all ways in life. Okay, now I'm eating a meal. I just want you to listen really carefully. Close your eyes if you want to listen to this later with your eyes closed. You're eating a meal, okay? There's carbohydrates on your plate, okay? It could be white bread, it could be whole grains, it could be whatever. A carbohydrate is a carbohydrate. You digest it, it breaks down, your blood sugar levels go up. Carbohydrates break down into sugar, okay? Sugar enters your bloodstream and your blood sugar levels go up. Absolutely perfect. It's the way the human body is designed to work. Now, I'll use myself as an example, okay? Let's say, for example, I had a bowl of pasta for lunch. I didn't have a bowl of pasta, but I'm just using it as an example. I actually had a really good steak and salad, but coming back to a pasta, all right? Now, it's a carbohydrate. It breaks down into sugar, okay? On digestion, that sugar gets into my bloodstream. My blood sugar levels rise. It's perfect. My pancreas produce insulin. Insulin is a hormone. Insulin will now take this extra glucose in my blood, this blood sugar, okay? And insulin, think of it knocking at your cell doors, okay? Your tissues, your cell doors, all the cells in your tissues, the doors open and insulin pushes that extra glucose or that sugar into your cells, okay? And those cells fill up, my blood sugar levels come down. Perfect. Everything is working well, okay? Now, these cells and tissues can hold a certain amount of sugar, whether it comes from a carbohydrate, whether it comes from jaggery, honey, white sugar, and ice cream, doesn't matter. It can hold a certain amount, all right? If these cells fill up, okay, now your liver will start to store the excess glucose that your cells can no longer hold on to because they're full. Think of them as storage tanks. So if you overrate carbohydrates, your cells are going to get filled very quickly. So now your liver will take this glucose and convert it for later use into something called glycogen. So glycogen is the storage form of glucose, but in the liver, all right? Now let's say after a while you need energy, the liver will break down this glycogen and put the glucose back into your blood and you'll have energy. Now, some of this glucose can also be stored in your muscle, a small 
limited amount in the liver, in your cells, and in your muscle. All right, so your muscle can actually store excess glucose. And when you start working out, it'll convert that glucose into energy. Okay, and you have no problem. Now, if my liver is full, if my blood cells, if my cells are full of glucose, the liver then starts to convert that glucose, which is stored as glycogen. This is as technical I'm going to get, okay? It starts storing it into fat, into fatty acids called triglycerides, which are stored in your fat cells. They're called adipose tissues, your fat cells. Just think about fat cells. Now, fat cells are limitless. Remember, we said only so much of glucose can be stored in your cell tissues, only so much in your liver, and only so much in your muscle. There's a limit. But your fat cells are limitless, which means the more glucose you have that's getting converted into fat, your cells will just multiply more and more, making more fat cells. The same cells that you see in your abdominal area, midriff, all the excess body fat is nothing but your adipose cells storing more and more fat. Right now, you would have said that, hey, this happens because I, I'm, I'm either eating too many carbs, overeating, eating all the time. What's the second thing that it tells you? Exercise. If I build more muscle, I can store more glucose. And if I work out regularly, I can convert that glucose into energy and not into fat. So you learn two things. Now let's go back to the pancreas. Very important for you to understand. You have your beta cells which produce insulin. So if there's damage to your beta cells, like in pancreatitis or pancreatic cancer or type 1 diabetes, you can no longer produce insulin, and then your doctors have to give you shots of insulin to take. Your alpha cells in the pancreas produce a hormone called glucagon. Now, the function of glucagon, let's say my blood sugar levels drop because I'm eating very low carb or I've missed a meal. Now, glucagon, the hormone, will stimulate the liver to release the stored glucose which is called glycogen in the liver, it releases it into your blood and my blood sugar levels go up. This is the survival mechanism of the body. So like I don't go into starvation, all right? And I don't collapse in case I'm starving or I'm not eating, I'm not gonna collapse because my liver will take that stored glucose in the form of glycogen and put it back into my bloodstream. Beautiful. So that's why when you're on a low carb diet or you're fasting, this is how glucagon works to keep you alive and keep you going, okay? Now, if the stores in the liver are over, okay, that's when you move into a ketogenic diet. So now glucagon will now convert the fatty acids stored in your fat cells into energy, ketones. Okay, but we're not talking about ketogenic. Okay, just understand glucagon. So insulin uptakes glucose into your cells, liver, and muscle, and glucagon basically releases it back into your blood when your body needs it. All right, now you've understood why overeating is bad for you. Okay, the moment you overeat, now protein and fats, they don't spike blood sugar levels at all. So you don't have to worry about protein and fat. You got to worry about carbohydrates. That is why athletes are on a high carb, high protein, high fat diet, because they are burning that much of energy. Now, if you are a layman, even doing a one hour workout, or let's say you have a lot of body fat to lose. Let's talk about insulin. Now, a lot of people say, but Luke, I'm working out, I'm gymming, I'm dieting, I'm doing everything, but I'm not losing weight. To unlock those fat cells so that fat can actually be burnt as energy, insulin has to be low. So think of insulin as a key. When it's low in your blood, it opens the fat cell and now you can burn fat. But if your insulin is high because you're snacking before your workout, you're snacking after your workout, insulin is still high. You've not really burned fat during your workout. You could be sweating, but insulin cannot unlock your fat cells. This is why fasted workouts or fasted walking in the morning suits you, especially if you're trying to lose weight, okay? So in the morning you wake up, you're not eating. Your blood sugar levels are low. You start working out either running or walking or lifting weights if it suits you. So the liver will first convert glycogen into glucose and you'll burn it. Then your muscles are engaged, so your muscles will burn it. Now when the store is over, insulin drops, you open the fat cells and your workout is actually burning body fat. That is the secret. There is no other way, which is why fasting done the right way, not the, not the fad way. When you fast, insulin drops. 
opens up the fat cells, and now you can actually burn fat. But if insulin is high because of one of the biggest mistakes we make, snacking, you hardly finished a meal, your blood sugar levels are high. They're starting to come down. Insulin is starting to come down and you eat a snack. It goes up again. Okay, now it's starting to come down again and then it's lunchtime. It goes up again. So throughout the day, your insulin is high. It can never become the key to open the fat cells. And that is why if you are looking at losing weight the right way, the first step, you would have already understood what you need to do. You know now what overeating is doing to your body. You know what a late night meal right before you sleep is wrecking havoc with your insulin levels, your blood sugar levels, fat storage, acidity, and everything. That's why keeping a gap between dinner and bedtime allows for better fat loss, better metabolism, better digestion, and better everything. So number one, low carb. I'm not saying starve. When I go low carb, I increase my protein and my fat, so I never feel hungry. Okay, if you want to start losing fat, you got to start decreasing your carbohydrates. And if you do not increase your protein and fat, you will be hungry and frustrated and you'll start craving more carbohydrates. The idea is not to starve. So even at every meal, you reduce your carbohydrates just a little bit. In three meals or two meals, you have an overall deficient of carbohydrates, which will allow your insulin to come down. And over time, you get better and better. So from having like four tablespoons of rice, cut it down to two. From having three or four rotis, cut it down to two. You're reducing carbs, you're allowing insulin to come down. So overeating, carbohydrates. Now let's talk about triglycerides, which is the biggest enemy of the heart. Okay, remember the glycogen that was stored in your liver? If your liver doesn't have the use of it for energy, it will start to convert it into fatty acids called triglycerides. These triglycerides, as you know from your lipid profile, are dangerous for you, which is why when, any, when patients come to us with high triglycerides, we know how to reverse it by simply going low carb, increasing their protein, their good fats, going low carb. Guess what? You break down those fatty acids into energy. So adding exercise to the patient's life, great sleep, you can reverse triglycerides easily. Unless in some cases it's very, very genetic and you have levels of 500 to 600, you may need pre-lipids and medication at that point, but that's for very few people. So coming back, you already know. Now there are hacks. Let's say today I'm going to step out right now and I'm going to eat a tiramisu or a chocolate cake. Okay, I can eat it. My blood sugar levels will spike up. All of it cannot be stored in my cell. So it is going to go to my liver and my muscle. But what I do after that tiramisu or chocolate cake is important. If I'm sitting around and just lazing around, I'm not stimulating muscle to burn that energy, that glucose, before it becomes fat. It is important to understand. So now if I've eaten the chocolate cake, I'm not going to be guilty, but I'm going to make sure I'm really active for the rest of the day. And my next meal is probably going to be when I'm physically really hungry and I'm going to be low carb then. Because I'll give my body enough of time for insulin to drop. And because I'm working out or walking or whatever, I'm stimulating muscle to convert that stored glucose in my liver and my muscle into energy. So it comes down to low carb, exercise, building muscle. That's why athletes can actually have, you know, I, I would see bodybuilders eat three kilos of Indian sweets after a workout. One day I walked up to this bodybuilder and I said, Dude, three kilos. He's saying, yeah, because I'm burning that much of energy. I don't want to lose weight. So if you are active, if you are super active and building muscle, there is nothing wrong with a little bit of sugar. There is nothing wrong with a dessert. It becomes a problem when you're sedentary and you have more body fat than muscle. So muscle is key. Now, a lot of people, they have their two cups of chai morning, evening with sugar. They have no weight problems. They have no diabetes, nothing because they're active people. Look at farmers. Farmers will have three or four cups of tea with sugar, but they're so active, they've probably burnt that sugar in the next 15 minutes. They also have high carb meals, high carb breakfast, high carb lunch, high carb dinner, but they are so active continuously throughout the day that the body never gets a chance to store or convert that glucose into body fat. That happens in us because we have sedentary lives. We're eating at the wrong time. We're eating too much. We're not active. We do more cardio than muscle building. And this is the reason why we have problems. It gets worse. Now you've accumulated a lot of body fat. Now you start to have a hormonal imbalance. Remember, every cell needs nourishment. 
Every cell requires angiogenesis to supply oxygen and nutrition to it. So now you have a bigger body than you're supposed to have. Your hormones go out of balance. You start to have more estrogen, which in turn makes you put on more weight. It also leads to endometriosis, man boobs, uh, fallopian tube issues, infertility, cysts, ER positive, breast cancer, because you have too much of something that you don't need too much of. And your testosterone starts to drop. So now you can't build muscle. You're lifting weights, but you can't build muscle because you don't have the hormone testosterone. But you're taking more and more protein, but you have less testosterone. The protein is spiking your blood sugar levels. And guess what? You're stuck in a vicious cycle. So to simplify it, very, very easy. Stop overeating. Stop snacking. Give your body a time to digest completely. Move your dinners earlier. Do not overeat. Okay, eat slowly and chew. Digestion starts in the mouth. If you are having dessert, if you are having sugar, make sure that you've had your veggies and your proteins before you reach the carbohydrate so that there are no spikes in your blood sugar level. You can live a normal life. Okay, you don't have to do extremes. The people who do extremes don't even fall in the category of longevity. Anyone who's living over the age of 90 and 100, they don't live in extremes. They live in balance. So get that clear. Don't get phased by social media and signs telling you what to do when the proof is there in the people who are living long. Simple, beautiful, happy lives in balance. Okay? Now, you need to understand that these are the lifestyle changes. Everything I told you today will reverse your triglycerides, will reverse your type 2 diabetes as well. So let me go back to a diabetic who's on insulin. So every time the blood sugar spikes, the doctor says, take one more insulin shot. So you have people taking five to six shots of insulin. They put on weight. Why? Because there's always insulin in their blood. But if they address the root cause of the problem and drop their carbohydrates and start to build muscle, it will slowly come down and the doctor will reduce the amount of insulin because you don't need it anymore. And you can come down from five shots to one shot. You'll start to lose weight. You'll start to reverse your type 2 diabetes. This is how it works. This is not a secret. This is how anatomy works. When you understand how the human body works, you will already know what your solution is. So listen to this video again with your eyes closed and you will already know the changes that you need to make in your lifestyle to reduce this. The last part, a lot of women and men carry a lot of abdominal fat, side fat, also because of an emotion called insecurity. Okay, this is a scientifically proven fact. When a woman or a man or a girl or a boy grows up or has a lot of insecurity in life, the human body tends to hold on to more and more weight, okay? And that weight now will create more and more estrogen and more and more vicious cycles of, you know, what I explained to you. So the emotional part also plays a huge role in your weight loss. That's why things like fasting done the right way, therapeutic, muscle building, therapeutic, lowering your carbs, therapeutic. That's if you're not an athlete. Uh, eating at the right time, keeping gaps, okay, increasing your protein and fat so that you do not need so many carbohydrates and early dinners. This is your secret. I can guarantee you. You do this for 15 days, I can guarantee you, you will start to see the, sh the, the fat on your body shift. There's a lot of misconceptions in our country in India. The older I get, I can't work out. I should never lift weights. No, you've been fooled for the longest time. The more muscle you build, even if you're 50, 60 or 70, you are going to live a better life with stronger bones, with a better metabolic rate. Everyone says, oh, at 40, my metabolism changes and stuff. So it's changed because you've not changed along with your body. You're doing cardio and you're not building muscle. Muscle wasting happens after the age of 30. So if you're not making an attempt to build it, this is the problem you're in. So age is your most limiting belief that you have. When you're 40, I'm going to have, you know, a lot of women have manifested early menopause at even 40 because all they're doing in their 35s is talking about it, resisting it, and they keep attracting it. And some women genuinely have it because of hormonal issues. It all starts in the mind. It all starts with understanding of the human body. This is your solution for diabetes, for triglycerides, for inflammation, for weight. And you, all you need to do is try it. It needs consistency. It needs a little bit of discipline. It doesn't need excuses. It doesn't need complaining. It doesn't need whining. If you choose the former, you will change your life and you will begin to feel the change in your body and mind as you start to burn that fat. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, breathe deep, and remember, you care is all about you.